for the world champs down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, it's big for us, uh, especially where we were, uh, not winning too straight and, and trying to kind of get some momentum going. Uh, doing it against an NFC East opponent is huge and, and now kind of setting ourselves up um, to, to, to make a run, you know, to, to try and do something special here. And uh, I think we're, we're again, we're leaving some plays out there, but we're still fine. We're finally starting to click a little bit um, and mesh together. And, you know, I, I'm, we're, we're extremely excited for next week's opportunity for sure. They should be excited they took down two NFC East rivals back-to-back -back weeks here. They're very much back in the conversation for the wild card, of course, and a big game on the road against the Cowboys away in Week 14. Those Cowboys who embarrassed the Saints, who embarrassed the Eagles earlier this season. Yeah. So we'll see how everyone stands after Week 14. Week 13 in the books, looking at next week's games, gentlemen. What is the most intriguing NFC matchup? Because we were talking about this in the morning meeting, and Peter, you brought it up. You were like... Look at this. Look at this schedule. It is, is this whole playoff picture? It starts now. I mean, this, this is the tournament, and the way the schedule shakes out, for whatever reason, Howard Katz and the boys in Mount Laurel. <laughs> <laughs> week, 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 and all these different matchups. And who is the game? Who is the game? Who is the game? All the NFC matchups this week. Yeah, shout out to the schedule makers. It didn't used to be like this, but there was one point they they got in a meeting and they said, we're going to make the end of the year so intriguing because of all the divisional matchups. And it leads me to my game, and I'm looking at the Eagles and Cowboys. There's no game bigger right now with the Cowboys in control of their own destiny. Eagles finding the rhythm right now in that fly, Eagle fly. You were talking earlier that the Cowboys are going to have to have a collapse if the Eagles want to have a chance in the month of December. They're going to have to drown Cowboys, drown, as my guy Shrake's is saying. I didn't say that. Not my words. <laughs> Not my words. At P. Shrakes. But this is going to come down to running the ball. You look at Adams for the Eagles. You look at Sproles getting healthy. And what Ezekiel Elliott is doing. And that's going to be what's going to be the deciding factor in this game. We're looking at these highlights. And this is why the Cowboys are as dominant as they are these last few weeks. And it's going to come down to who could run the ball better. For me, I don't feel like Carson Wentz is that far ahead of Dak Prescott. I mean, you can make the argument that Dak Prescott is playing better than Carson Wentz right now, and I wouldn't be mad at you if you said vice versa, but for me, it will come down to the running backs in this matchup. And if it's coming down to the running backs, that's old school NFC East that's football. What it is. And that's exactly what I want to see. You're not going to be flying high, lighting up the skies this late in the season. But for me, if Ezekiel Elliott controls the ground, controls the narrative of the game, then the Eagles are going to be staring at the behinds of the Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. for the rest of the season. Ooh, we'll see how that one shakes out. I'll go Bears-Rams here because we talk about the Rams. We know what the Saints are. Those are the two teams at the top. The Bears, there's more questions about that team than there are about the two above it. Uh, Nagy, sort of noncommittal when he was talking about the quarterback situation for this week. Will Trubisky be back? Was it the right, the right decision to rest him up against the Giants? That was, of course, a loss for them. And there's still this idea that who have they beat, right? They beat two teams with winning records, the Vikings and the Seahawks. They were nice wins, but I feel like we'll know where they stand going up against a Rams team that boasts the number two offense in the entire National Football League. The Bears, they have a top five defense. They're number four. So what's going to give? Who are the Bears? We will find out after this week. Mm. I can't wait to find out. It's incredible. <laughs> Sunday night in, in yeah. Chicago. Sunday night in Chicago, and I will go from Sunday night in Chicago to Monday night in oh. Seattle. Listen, I remember when going to Seattle, man, it was done. It was a wrap. That was some of my favorite times of the last decade, decade plus of football is the Seattle intimidation factor. And I look at this right now, the Seahawks, we've seen so many debates in college football right now about who should be in, who should be in the playoff. And the Seahawks will be one of those teams about, man, do they pass the eye test. You don't want them. They had a couple slip ups early in the year, but do you hold that against them? Seattle, I think we all agree, they're the number one in the wild card right now. They're the team that hashtag you don't want to see. The Vikings are much more interesting to me again because here we go again, Kirk Cousins, primetime national television. The problem that they would have in the college world, Vikings RPI is not good. Quality wins, not good. Let me just read off the Minnesota Vikings wins. Niners, Eagles, Cards, Jets, Lions, Packers. I don't see Chiefs, Rams, Saints, Bears. There isn't that one where you're like, Okay, damn, the Vikings could get to the NFC title game. The Vikings could get to this. They don't have it. And the primetime thing comes back, and here we go. It's going to be Monday Night Football, wit and test, and there's going to be every animation, every feature on Cousins' background, every halftime show, every Marvel trailer, every goofy little cartoon about him. And Kirk Cousins, I feel like we say this almost every Kirk Cousins game. This is your life. This is why they paid you. They paid you that money and brought you from Washington to win this game. I joke about Cousins all the time. We know he's a great father. 
I need him to be a bad mother in this one and get the Vikings in. It's time. It's past time. What a week, right? You guys just listed three amazing games between playoff contenders. I'm going with the wild card of the weekend in the NFC. It's the New Orleans Saints going into Tampa Bay, which two weeks ago I would have said, who cares about that game? That's going to be a walk. But the Buccaneers have won two. They're in the hunt. They're suddenly in the hunt. They're five and seven. And the Saints, for whatever reason, did not bring it on Thursday night against the Cowboys. And if you go back to week one, Look out. these two teams played in the Superdome. And who got the best of who? It's one of the biggest anomalies of the year, the schedule. You go back. Ryan Fitzpatrick just lit it up on the Saints defense. And what the Saints didn't realize it was a regular season game. It was I thought they never one. lose in the Superdome. What's and this? The, and the Buccaneers came in and beat them in their building. I go back to last year, week 17, and the Saints needed to win for home field implications. And the Buccaneers beat them in Tampa then. So the Buccaneers, for whatever wow. reason, Dirk Cutter and Sean Payton, there's a little stuff there. Yeah. Dirk Cutter seems to rise to the occasion. And Jameis Winston and Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Buccaneers seem to be able to play well against the Saints. We gave last week almost like a mulligan to the Saints saying, hey, you know what? That's a loss. They're They'll great. get right against the, against the bucket. Hey, you know what? The Bears are coming. Yeah. Other teams are coming. And if the Saints don't beat the Bucs, things get really weird those yeah. final three weeks because they've got the Panthers twice and they've got the foul. And I believe they've got, well, I forget who else they have, but they have the Panthers twice who are going to be playing for their football odds as well. Buccaneers Saints suddenly, when three weeks ago I thought this was a game you wouldn't even pay attention yeah. to, gets really interesting. And I think the Buccaneers would love nothing more than to rock the Saints world and beat them in Tampa. And think about this dynamic as a player if you're playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You already know walking into the locker room, we beat these guys before. Mm -hmm. Like we're one of the only flaws on their record. Two, coaching staff and players playing for not only the season, but for their careers. Yeah. Maybe with the Bucks, maybe somewhere else. So these guys are playing for their People own resume hard. and their own livelihood. Let me get in it's there. It's a different element, man. That Saints Final Four games, it's Buccaneers this weekend, and then I forgot the team in between. It was Panthers, then it's the Steelers, and then it's the Panthers. Saints is not a walk in the park for the Saints, and right. they, can't be, they, they can't score 10 points in this one. they got to right. put up points. It's real sticky. You just scared me because a week ago you sat here and said, don't overlook the Giants for the Bears. And we all know how yeah. that yep. went down. It was supposed to be a rebuilding year, a graduation. Maybe somehow, take a year off, go back, back through Europe, go sure. to Terra, take a lot of Instagram photos.